Apple has been one of the best performing stocks over the last two decades, but now the company is reaching a very different phase in its life cycle. It's a much more mature company. It's growing much more slowly, and yet investors are still paying a premium for this company. Just to put some metrics behind this, over the past five years, Apple's compound annual growth rate is just 8.1%. That's a decent growth rate, but definitely not a high growth stock. And yet investors are paying a multiple as if this is a high growth company. Right now, the price to sales multiple is about seven and the price to earnings multiple is about 27. This is despite the fact that analysts are only expecting about 4% growth over the next two years. That's what they're modeling right now. So I think this is a very expensive stock. And when you look at where Apple is making its money and where it's growing the business, there start to be some alarming trends and maybe some trends that are not good for the company's long-term future. So that's what I'm gonna dig into today is actually where the money is coming from and what's growing and what's not at Apple. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. So let's start with a couple of charts and first take a look at product revenue overall and product margins. You can see that this is absolutely the company's biggest segment, but hasn't really grown since fiscal 2021. So we're going on about four years of flat results from a hardware side. Even if you go back to 2017, the compound annual growth rate is only about 7%. Now the gross margin, 37%, that's really solid for a product company. And you can see that those margins have actually increased over the last four years, despite the fact that revenue is flat, but that might not be sustainable growth because there's only so much that Apple can do raising prices. And I think competition is getting much better in a lot of its product segments. But when you actually dig into what the hardware growth is, what the product growth is, this is where things get a little bit more alarming. And the black column is iPhone revenue. You can see that I think it's pretty clear iPhone revenue has stagnated since, again, the fiscal 2021 quarter. This is the biggest product, so it's obviously the most important for the company's revenue growth. But over this period of time, we've seen a number of major price increases. It's not uncommon for an iPhone to cost over $1,000 now. And the product cycle, I think is getting longer for most people. I know I'm going about three years, maybe even four years with my next iPhone before I upgrade the device. And I think that's pretty common right now. So this is something that happens typically in technology, this phase of improvement, the rate of improvements in hardware, the changes in that hardware and the physical design of the products is not changing nearly as fast as it was a decade ago. And that's why you're seeing some of the slowing growth for the iPhone. But if you look at some of the other products, this is where it gets really alarming. The Mac only growing 2.1% over the past decade, a little over a decade actually. iPad is actually in decline. The iPad was a pretty good product if you go back to 2012, 2013. Pretty significant piece of the company's revenue, but I think it's really been lost in Apple's focus and they're just not improving that iPad at a rapid rate. I think the app ecosystem has really stagnated. And the product is really showing that. And that's exactly what we see in these numbers with declining revenue. Where you're actually seeing growth at Apple is in wearables. So this is, they include wearables, home, and accessories. Accessories would be all kinds of things that Apple sells in Apple stores and make some of those accessories themselves. But really the two products to think about in this segment are going to be the Apple Watch. I think that, again, probably stagnated over the last few years, but very, very big business. And then AirPods. AirPods was the major growth driver over the past six or seven years. I know this is a product that I buy new AirPods more often than I buy an iPhone. So that has become a really, really critical product for Apple and has driven a lot of the growth. But again, you're starting to see that growth slow. You can see that over the last couple of years. The compound annual growth rate for wearables since 2021 is actually slightly negative. It's really negative for Macs and iPads. So that's where you see some of the decline in hardware sales, but even for accessories, things are flat right now. So this is not really Apple's growth segment. Hardware, which is really what Apple is known for, is not where the company is growing. So where in the world is Apple growing? This is where things get a little bit more complicated for Apple and for investors. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Where Apple is seeing significant growth is in services. Now services encompass a bunch of different things at Apple. There are the 30% fees that they take for buying digital goods within the app ecosystem or for downloading apps that are paid on the app store. 
there are cloud services, there's Apple TV, there's the fees that they pay for things like tap to pay with the Apple card. There's a bunch of different small businesses that add up to be a pretty big business. But the big one to think about with Apple and where a lot of this profitability comes from is the check that they get from Google every year for Google being the default search engine in the Safari browser and across the iOS ecosystem. The details behind that deal are really kept secret by both of those companies. But what we know right now is that Apple is generating about $20 billion in revenue. That is almost 100% profit for Apple. And that is through what's known as a revenue share deal. So Google is generating revenue from the ads that are served on iOS devices in the search engine. Apple takes a cut of that, and that's where that $20 billion or so comes from. And when you look at these numbers, this is where the company is really growing. Services revenue since 2017, 17% growth rate and profit is growing at a 22% growth rate. So the question here for Apple is, is this going to continue? Will this continue to be a growth driver for the company? And I think that's where you run into a lot of questions for Apple. First of all, you have the questions that are facing Alphabet. I mean, if you think that this is a sustainable and growing business, why not just buy shares of Alphabet, which are trading at a lower multiple? Because this is where Apple is getting its growth, is through its partnership with Alphabet. That is something that investors need to think about. But the other thing is, is Alphabet's search business growing or is there an adjacent business they're gonna be able to add to this? Now, the two companies have reportedly talked about Apple accessing Gemini, Alphabet's artificial intelligence model. I don't think they'll probably take over all of the artificial intelligence tools on Apple devices. Apple's gonna to wanna to maintain some control of that. But it's very possible that Apple does the local or smaller model work that happens on device and some of the off device cloud services are pushed to something like the Gemini model. And maybe there's a revenue share deal there, but we have no idea what that business would potentially look like, or even how some of these LLMs are going to be monetized. So very possible that we start using artificial intelligence more. And it's not the money making machine that we see from something like search. I mean, search is a business that has been optimized over the last 20 or 25 years and is now just an absolute money-making machine for Google, Apple gets to tap into that. And that's a huge reason that the services business is so profitable and so big. The other thing to think about from a disruption perspective is Apple's facing a lot of scrutiny for the way that they run the App Store, not only in the US, but also in Europe. Now, I don't think a lot of these court cases are necessarily gonna go anywhere because there's not a lot of legal standing for forcing a company like Apple, which runs a closed ecosystem, to allow other people to develop app stores and apps that can be downloaded or sideloaded. So there are some protections, at least in the U S the European union, maybe a little bit different, but it doesn't seem like they're going to be, there's going to be major disruption there. But what this highlights is that the ecosystem is maybe not as strong and as attractive as it once was. Developers are finding reasons to develop, to develop in other areas through web apps, which you can just access through a browser or now through artificial intelligence tools. So I think there's a lot of reasons to think, that Apple may, may face a lot more competition over the next decade than it has over the past decade. And one of the reasons the stock has done as well as it has recently is just simple, simply multiple expansion. You used to be able to buy Apple stock for 10, 11, 12 times earnings once you pulled out cash. Now you're talking about a stock that's trading at nearly 30 times earnings. So very expensive stock. It's also a much slower growing company than it once was. And the growth that does exist at Apple is in this services business, which is providing services for a smaller and smaller number of device sales each year. And I think that puts Apple in a fundamentally vulnerable position. Now, this is not a business that's gonna go anywhere, but the question that I'm looking at today is, is Apple stock a good buy given these trends in the business? And I think the answer is no. This is a company that I've been trimming a little bit over the last year or so, but I think I'm probably gonna do more of that in 2024 just because I don't like the valuation, I don't like these business trends, and I don't like the reputation hit that Apple has been taking from some of the decisions that they've been making related to the App Store and devices and the way that they're trying to monetize their product. Hopefully this provided a little bit of context on where Apple's money really comes from. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching everybody. See you here next time.